Let's start with question two. Annexure A, so as soon as you see that, make sure that you go and find your annexure. So here's my annexure. It's a floor plan, right? So make sure you have that. Annexure A shows the floor plan of Jan's house with a veranda in South Africa. A veranda, also known as a porch or a stoop, tell me you're South African without telling me you're South African, is an open area with a roof over it. The following is an artist's drawing of one of the elevations of Jan's house. Okay, so there's the drawing of the house. Let's see what the questions ask us. So it says, use Annex to A and the information above to answer the questions that follow. Write down the number of bedrooms on the floor plan. Okay, so here's the floor plan. Let me just make sure you can see it. Right, there's a the floor plan. So notably, whenever you're working with this, note where north is. So there's north. Wow, I messed up that arrow. Right, there would be east, there would be south, and there would be west. Because remember, you go in clockwise direction. So we have one bedroom, two bedrooms, and this is where students want to stop. But look, there's a master bedroom as well. So actually, there's three bedrooms. Master bedroom meaning basically the main bedroom. Okay, that's generally where the owners of the house stay. Okay, so let's write this down. Question 2, 2.1, and we say there are three bedrooms. Okay, let's look at the next question. Which room will be the first room you will enter from the veranda? Okay, so you're on the veranda, you live in your best, okay? So over here, and if you want to get into the house, you're going to enter the living room, okay? So always just note where you are, and if you enter, this is the only door you can enter the house from the veranda. So to be the living room, I don't know if that's one or two words, but you've got your mark there, okay? 2.3. In which general direction, so here we're talking about sort of north, south, east, west, right? Does the master bedroom window face? Okay, so master bedroom, we're over here, right? There's the window. So it's kind of facing between north and east. Remember, you always um, name your sort of main cardinal point, which is north or south first, and then your secondary cardinal point, which would be east or west. So in this case, it's going to be northeast because it's in between those two. Right, so you can just write it as NE or Northeast, that's okay. And then move on to the next question. So your next question, um, one of the door locks needs to be changed. Okay, write down the probability in simplified fractional form, right? So not a decimal, not a percentage as a fraction. That um, is not, right? So we have to write down the probability that it is not one of the interior doors. Okay, so where we're going to start is we're first going to say, well, how many doors are there? So let's count them, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six doors in total. And we basically want the probability that it's not an interior door. So that's the same as saying, what's the probability that it is an exterior door, right? Or leading to the outside. So the only doors leading to the outside is the kitchen and the living room, which leads onto the veranda. Now, importantly, remember the veranda is an open space. So this counts as an open going to the exterior, right? An exterior door. You could be saying, oh, the bathroom, but look here, I mean, my printing's really bad, but that's actually a window, right? So it's actually an interior door. You don't have to go into the garden in order to get into the bathroom. That'd be a little bit awkward, right? So there's two ways we can get what we want, which is basically not being an interior door. And there's six doors, right? But it asks for a simplified fraction. You should be able to simplify this in your head like this, right? Basically divide both the numerator and the denominator by two. Or just pop in your calculator. Let me show you. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, two over six. Put that in your calculator and it simplifies it for you. Okay. So there's your answer. Fractional form. We can leave it like that. And let's continue. Okay. So 2.5 says Yan. Um, remarked that the kitchen gets a lot of sunlight. Critically comment on his remark. Okay, so here's the kitchen. Now we know that the sun rises in the east, right? And it sets in the west. So actually that doesn't make sense because he's not going to get a lot of sun over there, right? If it, if it um, sort of rose in the west and then sort of set in the east, then it would. But in this case, no, right? So we say, Jan, sorry, you're not right. So we say, no. Uh, he is not correct. So always when with these questions, actually state whether the statement is valid or correct. There's like a mark allocated to that. But then it says critically comment. So we need to comment on this. So what I'm going to say is, um, 
you can say that it is south facing, right? So basically in South Africa, and it told us that this was in South Africa, it said it here, right? In South Africa, if a room is south facing, it doesn't get a lot of sun, right? A north facing room gets a lot of sun, okay? So that's quite important. So let's say here, um, no, he is not correct. So you say in SA, um, south facing rooms, like the kitchen, right? Like Jan's kitchen, um, do not get much sun. And we have just got ourselves three marks. Good job, us. Okay, let's continue. Give one reason why the windows shown in the above drawing do not represent the windows of the kitchen and the dining room. Okay, so if they if it was the kitchen and the dining room, right? So basically I'm changing the view and there would be the kitchen and the dining room. Well, it doesn't make sense because it doesn't show the bedroom or the bathroom, right? And if we were looking at it from this direction and those windows were the kitchen and the dining room, then we would we would expect to see these other rooms. So we say um, I would just say the bathroom, bathroom and bedroom um, on either on either side of the dining room and kitchen are not shown. Okay, so you're basically saying it can't be that because they're not shown. Okay, let's flip over the page and finish off this question. 2.7, the scale used for the full plan is one centimeter representing a thousand millimeters. So now at this point, you should be thinking, okay, I need to remember my centimeters, meters, millimeters, and all those conversions, right? Then it is write down the scale in number scale format, okay? So let's just write this down firstly. So we say one centimeter, is going to be a thousand millimeters. So first thing we're gonna do, oh, millimeters, sorry. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put both of them in centimeters. So we know that 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. So we're gonna divide this by a by 10 in order to get it into centimeters. So now that's centimeters, just pop that in your calculator, basically divide by 10. So now one centimeter equals 100 centimeters so one centimeter on the map equals 100 centimeters in reality and so the number scale is just this right you can't simplify it anymore because we always want it to be one to something and so it's very important that um you put them both with the same unit but once they have the same unit you can drop the unit okay so there is that question done let's continue we're almost done Jan stated that the given scale is... Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong question. Be careful not to do that. 2.7.2, um, measure the inner length of bedroom 2 and use the given scale to calculate the actual length in meters of bedroom 2. Okay, so here's bedroom 2, right? Um, so remember that this is length here, right? And that's width. So we're looking at this here. Make sure you get your... Um, uh, ruler, I'm just going to do it here. No, I'm going to do it in millimeters. Oh, goodness. I'm going to do it in millimeters. Okay, so let's measure it. So I'm thinking it is 4.4, right? So you'd see that it's 44 millimeters, but I want it in centimeters because we've just spent the whole of the previous question looking at centimeters, right? So if it's 44 millimeters, it's going to be 4.4 centimeters. Okay, so it's 4.4 centimeters, right? Now we know that one centimeter equals 100 centimeters in reality. So if this is on the floor plan. We're going to basically times it by 100 to get what it would be in reality. So 4.4 times 100 is going to be 440 centimeters, but they asked for the, the length in meters. So you can say 440 centimeters divided by 100 which gets us back to 4.4 meters, right? So you could be saying, oh, we times by 100 and then we divide by 100. Well, here we times by 100 to get what it would be in reality in centimeters. And then we divided by 100 to get what it would be in meters, right? So here we're adjusting for scale 
and here we are adjusting for units, right? So it's two different adjustments. Don't mix them up. Okay. So that's your answer there. If you had got any measurement between 4.3 and 4.5 centimeters, so if you didn't get exactly what I got, that's okay. They would have marked it if you were anywhere in this range. Okay, similar to um, if you do geography, they also allow for a range. Let's do the last question for this video. I said, Jan stated that, a given, that the given scale is not very accurate to use if photocopies were going to be made of the plan. Critically comment on his statement and give a reason for your answer. So you basically have to say, is he right or is he wrong? And say why. So there's two ways you can argue this. Generally, I would say, yes, he is right. Because what happens when you photocopy is you often change the scale. So um, when photocopying, um, photocopies um, may be different size, right? May be a different, a different size, but still display the same scale, right? So basically what that means is saying, okay, I could take this floor plan and it's got a scale, like let's just say this is what it said, its scale was like this. I can take this and I can photocopy and make it bigger, right? But the scale is still going to, it's going to state this, right? And then we know that now if you're using measurements on a bigger photocopy, it's not going to be right. Same thing if you made it smaller. You could say, yeah, he is, he could, you could say he's wrong, but then you need to say, well, the photocopies need to be strictly the same size as the original, right? So you could say it either way, but it's easier to say, yes, he's correct, because the logic there with regard to photocopying makes sense. Okay, that's question two done. Let's move on to question three.